thanks everybody for showing up and listening to me. So when they asked me to come and do a talk, I was like, I need to think of a topic that I actually have real world experience in. I don't want to come up here and just regurgitate information, get on my soapbox and uh, try to make you guys think I'm special. So um, I thought going with your gut was, was a, a really good topic. And just any of you guys out there, have you ever had that feeling like when you walk into a room and you didn't hear anything, you didn't see anything, but you can just tell that there's another human presence in there? Or you're hiking in the woods and you feel like something's watching you all of a sudden. And you look around and it might be an animal or it might be a person. Or, you know, I've been on the giving or receiving end of a mother's intuition. So these are kind of all nuanced concepts, but I, I feel like everybody has kind of experienced that in one way or another. And uh, what I want to share with you is that concept of going with your gut. And when I'm talking about going with your gut, it's, um, it's, it's a, actually it, it's intuition and instinct kind of coming together. Uh, so I'll just share my experience with you guys and uh, how it's been a real asset to me in learning how to, how to listen to that. So um, I'm from Hawaii, born and raised on the North Shore of Oahu. This is me as a child. Um, so I kind of had a unique experience growing up, I guess, to most of America in that I had unbridled access to really raw and wild nature in the ocean. And I don't know, I, this is a funny one because I actually saw this picture the other day looking for old pictures. So I was like, why does my parents have a picture of two little local kids? Then I realized I'm actually in that picture. You see that, that white, like, I didn't exactly blend in growing up, except when I was on the beach, I blended into the sand. That local kid's got a beard. He's like, what the fuck is that? Is that a human? So that's just my little ode to kind of also being in the wild on land. You know, I definitely was a minority growing up, and it was a somewhat rough place. So between the ocean, um, the unpredictable wild aspects of a Hawaiian ocean, the animals in it, spearfishing my entire life as a, as a child growing up. And then also on land, like, you know, you had to kind of develop a sixth sense for knowing when to walk out of a room, <laughs> knowing when it was time to leave a party. Um, so I, I accidentally grew up in this environment to where I had to listen to my instincts on a regular basis. I had to give them credence. I was rewarded when I did listen to my instincts and punished when I didn't. And so growing up in the North Shore of Oahu, I ended up getting noticed because I really loved surfing big waves. Um, and things started going well for me. I got sponsors. This is when I was younger. And um, all of a sudden, I'm traveling the world. I'm living the dream. Um, surfing gave me this incredible chance. And uh, I was doing better than ever in my career. And this is, I had always been into bigger surf, and this is right around when toe surfing became super popular. So. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, they kind of figured, all right, we paddled into the biggest waves that you can catch under the, the, the power of your own two arms. We're going to start towing in with jet skis. And uh, it was a really cool movement. And it f fulfilled a niche, and it brought performance surfing to big waves. But at the same time, it kind of turned it into a circus. So it went from like a really core group of individual, individuals to any guy having a midlife crisis, instead of getting a Corvette, if he lived in Hawaii, he got a bunch of tow gear. And so it, it kind of was an equalizer. You didn't have to have a lot of skill. Um, and it turned into this kind of macho dick measuring competition. And that's just not what I was into. And, um, and uh, at that point in my career, 9-11 happened. The whole surf uh, industry kind of retracted big time. I, even though I was doing the best I ever had, uh, lost my sponsors, and then I proceeded to spend a year and a half. I had to make the decision, all the money that I saved my whole life growing up, I had to make the decision whether to spend that to stay relevant or disappear and go get a job or, or find some, some other way of making a living. So I took the gamble. I spent 
every bit of my life savings for the next year and a half. So this was a very contemplated, thought, thought out process. But with the entire surf media looking at toe surfing, you think that if I'm gambling my entire life savings on keeping this career alive, that I should really embrace what's in vogue and embrace, fully embrace toe surfing and go that direction completely. And this is where exercising that gut feeling and learning to listen for that gut feeling really came into play for me in, in real life, not in a life or death situation. Um, because what I would liken it to is when you get those feelings like I was describing earlier that I think we've all felt before, that's like, that's like the trombone in the symphony. You hear that, that's accessible to us, like bam, oh, hair, hair stands up on the back of your neck, like something's happening. That's a trombone, but there's also a whole symphony. There's more elegant versions of this instinct behind it that you can really use and apply to your life. I say going with your gut. Some people say going with your heart. I pick gut because I'm macho and want to sound tougher. Um, but it's along the same lines, and it's something that I was really fortunate to be able to learn through nature and, and young life experiences. So at this point, after gambling my whole life savings, I decide to go completely against the advice of pretty much everybody and stick to paddle and surfing. And that completely changed the trajectory of my life. And I, I hooked up with individuals with like-mindedness because I thought, you know what, we have not proven what we can do with our own two hands. Like, there's still work to be done here. And um, because I listened to my gut and I gambled it all, I, you know, I got fortunate. The, the whole surf industry and media kind of turned around. It became in vogue, and we became part of something that pushed the level of surfing to, to new heights. And it was really a beautiful thing. So it went from toe surfing Jaws, which is a premier big wave in, <coughs> sorry, in the world, to paddling it. And so that would have never been even conceived to be possible 10 years ago. And I could have never paddled into a wave like that had I not had a, a group and a synergy and, and a, a lot of energy to, to be around and support. So I don't think any of that would have happened had I not listened to my gut because I learned so much at a younger point in my life that it's worth listening to. And, uh, and another, another interesting thing is, uh, so I got a buddy, his name's Andy Brandy Casagrande. He's got a great uh, Instagram feed, you should check him out. But uh, he's one of the leading white shark cinematographers in the world. And it, we talk regularly, and he's telling me because he's done so many Shark Week interviews, and he's interviewed so many shark attack victims, probably more than anybody. And he said, you know what, man, it is the strangest thing. And it, nobody ever brings this up in that whether it's a person who's never been in the ocean before or somebody who's been in the ocean their entire lives, every single one of them describes the moments before it happening having this feeling that something big was close and this immediate fear. He's like, nobody ever talks about this. From the people waiting in the water that came down to the beach for you know their vacation once a year to um, seasoned professionals. So I really do believe, and, and my point being is like, I don't want to put myself up on a pedestal. I think we all have this innate sense that's hard to describe. Maybe it's not scientifically described yet, but it's there, and it works. And um, I guess what I'd want to pass on is give your, gut, your, your instinct, give your intuition, give your gut a seat at the decision-making table in your life, and I don't think you're going to regret it. No I don't know if these guys know that you've swum with a very large great white shark oh. at least once, right? I forgot um, to hit that. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> can you tell us about that experience? I mean, so this is I about Holy. the instinct stuff and everything, and spending a lot of time in the ocean um, as a as a child and doing a ton of free diving and spear fishing. I've I've been super involved in working with sharks and big animals in the water. This was actually on a National Geographic. Uh, French National Geographic shoot years ago. But um, I'm also involved in uh, a lot of shark tagging projects with, where you're actually free diving with them and tagging them via spear gun. 
So um, you're. So you can kind of see the girth on this oh, one. You're holding his fin. But instinct really play comes into play a lot with big animals like this. They really pick up on things. I'm definitely not saying you throw logic out the door, but instinct does. You have to get a really fast read. And your logic can, I mean, if you're using 100% logic, you wouldn't put yourself in that position to begin with. <laughs> so it does only get you so far. So here's another one. So this trip was actually just, just went down there to kind of do security for the camera guys so they could focus and look through the, the viewfinder um, and film these sharks without having to worry about another one, because usually you had multiple sharks. Um, and so uh, we were kind of watching their back, but this is in between watching their back and just interacting with them How a bit. Not get mad? Yeah, by the end, we're with certain individuals who are rubbing their bellies at the same time. And, but it, it's very character driven, the same way, you know, none of these two dogs will have the same personality that you see running around. You, you have to at least apply that dosage of variance of personality with the sharks. Because if you think about it, with the white sharks, um, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to catch a, a, a healthy adult sea lion in the water. It's pretty hard. And for them to have an intelligence level that's close to dogs, and we know how smart dogs are, obviously that big predator is very intelligent itself and therefore lends to more um, personality, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely want to, you, you want to arm yourself with confidence in a lot of ways in your body language and also just your mindset.